Hi, everyone. Today we are talking with Shane Alexander Finkelstein, who we are so privileged to talk to. She, he is actually one of Shana's original ABA clients um, from maybe 20 years ago. Is that right? And he is now in um, ecosystem management and is going to talk with us about his experience with autism. So hi, Shane. Welcome. Hello, Shira. Thank you for having me. Hi, um, Shane. It's so good to see you again and so great to hear your voice. It's really good to see you too, Shana. I'd love if you could introduce yourself to our audience. Tell us a little bit about you. Hi, everybody. My name is Shane Fingelstein. I'm a young man who has autism. Now, growing up, you may think my social skills and my social life has been an easy one. That's actually not true. Because ever since I was really young, like around two years old, I had a lot of like social problems and I was really having trouble fitting in with other people aside from my family. Like I would have trouble saying the right things in public and be socially awkward and have trouble with social cues and understanding different situations. That's why I was diagnosed with autism when I was two years old. And ever since then, I've had ABA therapy by several therapists. And how ABA helped me was it really helped me to maintain my, develop good social skills and develop a good work ethic, which was the case today, and going to a special school. Before going to a special school, I'd been to a lot of public schools, which were was not a great experience for me in the slightest. While academically, it was fine. Socially, not so great because I had trouble fitting in. I didn't really make a lot of friends growing up, maybe one or two. But other than that, my social life was nothing. But that changed when I went to a special needs camp and a special needs school back in 2008. But special needs camp started in 2005. And those two things, along with ABA, before I actually went into the workforce, those three main things really changed my life forever. And they changed my life in the sense that I was able to form meaningful relationships with other people. I could be in a place where I could really be myself while still adhering to rules. And if it hadn't been for ABA, I wouldn't have had good social communications I wouldn't have ever gone to a special camp or school. I wouldn't have gone to university. I wouldn't have gone to get a job. I wouldn't have said, you know what? Some days are going to be longer than, than others, and that's okay. And I would have never, ever started a 10-month contract and got a work phone for the very first time. And today was your first day um, of this job, right? That's correct. That's amazing. Congratulations. It sounds like you've uh, you really come very far and have had a lot of experiences. And you started way back when you were two. Do you even do you remember that? Or what's your earliest memory of, of ABA? My earliest memory of ABA was actually when I was around two years old because, because I didn't have very good social skills. That's when things needed to change, like for me personally. And it needed for me to change because I was different from everybody. So do you remember what your favorite part of ABA has been? You have like some good memories. To be honest, Shira, it's kind of hard to pick a good memory from ABA because there were lots of great memories when I did ABA with a lot of therapists. Like, But if I had to pick a few, they would have to be weekend outings for sure. Whether it be going to the movies, swimming, go karting, golf, mini golf, bowling, the mall, like the, just those fun things. And I felt those were my favorite parts about ABA because it really gave me the opportunity to learn how to be in public and how to function in society and learn how to make friends in the future. Because what my ABA therapist told me is I didn't know this then, but the reason why I'd probably say they I was probably one of their favorite clients is when we went out, it didn't really feel like work to them at all. 
it, it was because I didn't really have a lot of friends growing up until I went to a special camp in school. The relationship that I had with them was kind of like, although we they had to be serious at times, and that's okay because there are skills that I had to work on. The relationship for the weekend outings was kind of like going out with a friend. And it made me feel happy because I had that special someone with me. And if it hadn't been for that, I don't think I would have had made a lot of friends and went out with the friends I have now. And for that, I'm forever grateful. Wow. I love that. How, how EBA can really happen in, in a fun, community-based way. It doesn't just have to be boring and no fun, but you really were able to develop those relationships with your therapist so that you were able to go into the community and um, grow as a person and, and make those friendships with other people. It's amazing. Thank you, Shira. And I was really happy I was able to develop that bond with the ABA therapist that I had because, and it was good for me because I couldn't stay in my house forever. Like I had to go out and make friends. For sure. That's a big part of, you know, all of our lives is figuring out our place socially and within, you know, a school setting and then within a work setting and knowing how to, you know, branch out and be a little bit uncomfortable. I think we all experience that when we go to a new place or have to make new friends or go to a new school. And so, you know, you, it sounds like you really practice that a lot and were able to become more comfortable with it. Um, and now ultimately going on to university and, and being in a job and being able to apply those skills um, is really amazing. It sounds like you're really taking those lessons that you've learned and are able to continue to, to use them throughout your experiences. Thank you. And, and I have gone come this far, but if I'm being perfectly honest, there are still some things that I need to work on socially, even though I have come this far. This past summer, if you don't mind me saying, I don't have depression, but I actually started to develop signs of depression because last year when I started my job at the TRCA, although well, although where I went, the places I went to, like a special school and camp and ABA changed my life, and although I had made a lot of friends, where I worked this year, this was the first time everybody accepted me for who I was on the spectrum instead of my diagnosis, unlike other places I'd been to in the past. And it made me feel happy because from a working standpoint, although they're my colleagues, this was really the first time where I could make friends with colleagues, not just on a professional level, but those were the people who I could potentially be friends with in the future. And to prove that, I actually made a poster at the very end of my contract that symbolizes that. And if you don't mind if I share my screen, I want to share what I made on the last day of my contract. Shane, I've seen this and it's wonderful. Definitely share your screen. Um, and also, if you can send us a picture of that afterwards and we can post it with a podcast, that would be great. That would be awesome. So for those of you listening, we can describe it a little bit. So this is one of this is one of the posters that I made back that I made in December. This was on the very last day of the contract. What you can see right here are puzzle pieces. Each puzzle piece represents the people on my crew who I worked with over the spring and fall. There's a lot of names up there. Uh, a lot of people. <laughs> it's a mixture. These were my were my crew leads. Those were my bosses. And these many puzzle pieces were my colleagues that I worked with. And what the puzzle pieces represent, their autism and some of the struggles with autism that people with autism can have. And what the meaning of my poster is, is that if my supervisors or bosses look for other people on the autism spectrum or have any other neurological disorder, given that they have the right skills for the job, they should be included too because I shouldn't be the only person with autism that has a job. Everyone needs a job. Now, people might think I decide to leave myself out of the poster um, just because I didn't want to be in it. That's actually not true. 
it's not that I didn't want to be in the poster. As you can see right here, this is my puzzle piece. And the reason why I left myself out and gave myself a blank puzzle piece is because this is a gift that I want to make for my colleagues. And although everyone said that I was part of the whole team, I decided to leave myself out of the gift to sacrifice myself for everyone else so that they can be part of my experience and what I've experienced. And if it honestly hadn't been for my colleagues and the bosses that I've had this past year, I don't think I would have stayed with the job. So this is basically the meaning of my poster. Wow, that's really amazing and, and super intricate. And what I love is if, if for people who can't see is each puzzle piece also has a different color picture kind of symbol with it, which I mean, to me seems like you noticing the uniqueness of everybody and how every puzzle piece is different and everybody brings something else to the job and to the table, um, which is really meaningful that you were able to like, you know, come up with a different um, little thing in each puzzle piece. So that's super impressive. Thank you, Shira. But what the puzzle pieces mean for each person is based on my working relationship with them and ways I could be with friends with them in the future. Wow, that's that's really well thought out. Thank you. Thank you for and sharing. Shane, you you had a question for me at the beginning. We had talked just before we got onto the podcast recording. And your question was, um, you know, what what was my favorite part about working with you and you know what stands out? And I have to and I always say Shane's one of my favorite clients. And I do say that about a lot of people, but you really are one of my favorite clients or were one of my favorite clients. And I, that poster does represent that, Shane. And what I mean by that is that your intelligence is uh, is so incredible. And you have always been such a hard worker. And you've right from the minute I started working with you, I could tell there was somebody inside who was just locked inside their body. And, you know, you said at the beginning of this podcast that ABA changed you. And I really don't think it did. I don't think you've changed. I think that you have, you know, evolved and we've gotten the person who you were inside of you out of you um, so that you can, you know, be who you are today. Um, and I, I think it's fantastic. You're such a kind person, hardworking, thoughtful, um, and you really do think of everyone. Thanks, Shana. And I love, um, I, I love what you said about how, you know, every person with autism needs a job, but it's not only that, it's about the acceptance for who you are. You're not Shane with autism, you're Shane, and you've got a ton of experience and you've got a ton of things that you can bring to the table to help the organization. And that's what people really need to recognize. Yep, that's true. Yeah. So how can you inspire other people with neurological disabilities? I think for that, how I can inspire them is just because you have a setback, it doesn't mean you can't be successful in whatever you want to do. Like you can have like a delayed communication thing but you can still be like a successful speech writer. And that was the case for me. Like at my school, when I graduated high school, although my communication skills aren't the best, I don't know if I ever told Shira this, but I told you that I was actually one of the valedictorians for my high school graduation. Wow. I was. Amazing. And I was actually happy I got that honor because it showed how that school really changed my life forever. And if it hadn't been for that school, I don't think I would have had a great work ethic, but it was really ABA that taught me that. And for that, I'm forever grateful forever. So what, what would you say to your younger self or someone who's in your position who might be just, you know, like you talked about when you were struggling in public school or you hadn't yet found your place and they're, they don't find like they feel like they belong. What would you tell someone else who's in that position now? I would tell myself, yourself, Shane, why are you acting like that? Like, I know it's hard for you, but I know it'll come with time. But you know what? It may not be with you right now. But just remember, even if people are being hard on you or, have to be strict with you. It's not because they're mad at you. 
It's because we want to help you. And you have a lot of greatness inside of you. And if you just let go of that wall and just try as hard as you can, I know you can do it. Those are, that's, that's really good. Those are some good words. Mm-hmm. And it feels like you listened to yourself because you did work hard. So that's awesome. Thank you. Um, something tells me you like movies because you mentioned it on your <laughs> form. What is your favorite movie? It would have to be The Lion King. Why? The- no? After yeah. all these years, oh my gosh. <laughs> Why? Because it talks about change and the circle of life. And it speaks to me as a person with autism because even though you may start off really small, if you really work hard at something, and if you really put your mind to something, you can do something perfectly because it's not going to come right away unless you actually work at it. Like take Simba, for example. He really wants to be king, but he actually has to work his way up to it. So it takes time. So what's that, what, what are you working towards? What's next for Shane? I think the next step for me is, although I'm in a good job right now, the goal is to find a steady forever job. So and what I, would your dream career be? It would be an environmental restoration data collector or an environmental data analysis. As a matter of fact, I actually applied to the city of Toronto as an urban forestry collector, and I did get an interview for that in the summer. I wasn't one of the successful candidates the first time around. Having said that, though, I actually applied for it again. I applied for it last week, and it shows that even though I wasn't successful the first time around, I'm not going to give up. I'm going to keep going. I don't think it's a coincidence that you like data collection. After all those years of ABA. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Full circle. Um, so how can people uh, reach out to you or connect with you if they want to know more? They can reach out to me by my email or Facebook. Okay. And we'll put both of those in the show notes so that mm-hmm. anyone can hear more from Shane um, if you're interested. And this was really special. Um I've I've heard a lot about you. I've never got a chance to meet you. And so I'm so honored that you came on and talked about your story. Um, And it sounds like you're really on a good path and I wish you success with your goals. Uh, I'm going to rewatch The Lion King now and get some inspiration because I don't, I remember watching it many years ago. Um, But thank you for being here. And we hope you'll stay in touch with us for sure with Shana and let us know where you're at. Absolutely. And honestly, even though my time at ABA is a long over, that doesn't mean I'm not going to be in touch with any of my ABA therapists because even after all these years, I'm still in touch with almost all of them. Wow. That's really special. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Shane's amazing at keeping in touch. He really is. So Shane, thank you so much. It was really, really wonderful to talk with you. I'm glad that we had the chance to do this. I really appreciate it. It was a pleasure speaking with you and Shira today. Thank you, Shane.